Okay, now comes the biggest challenge, and that's to get ba everything back in without uh, having parts left over. I know that can be a challenge for some of you. Don't I don't mean it like an insult, sorry. Okay, so the belt goes back on. Let's let's say this is a new one. This one is fine. Uh, I have no reason whatsoever to to get a new belt for this one because it works fine, and this projector uh, is running, and I don't need it on a daily basis. So I get it on the small pulley first. The motor side and then get push it on the big one and then just gently roll it around and then it should slip on like that okay so the belt is back in place and what we now have to do is to put uh, the axle back first and then retighten all those parts I took out so first get the axle back in its place and the axle has to shift but this part, the shutter and the pulley and the, the cam lobes have to stay in the same position. So I'm going to gently push it and turn this a little bit until the axle Jumps back in its place right here in the in the rear bearing. Then first I'm going to address this part. This is a coupling. This spins freely, and you can uh, turn the projectors mechanics uh, manually uh, by pushing this knob in. First, get that screw back in. Now this is important, I can show it, maybe I can, yes I think I can. There is a flat spot on the axle, that's the place where you should screw it tight. Same goes for this one, probably the same goes for these ones, but I can't see it. I only can feel that. Well, let's turn it over to that spot. and tighten it. So now I put those two springy parts back in and these pieces go forward because they grip into a little axle, a little stub that's on the knob. Now if this knob cannot grip these springs, these springy parts, you can just well, it does it a little bit, but not, not nice enough. You can just loosen this screw and shift the part forward a little bit. That's fine. That's what I want to see. Uh, the timing of this part versus the axle is not important at all. Only the position, make sure it, it's, the pulleys are in line. The only timing that's important and uh, that will be placed back automatically is the, the claw and these cam lobes. But that's fine because there's just only one way how you can assemble those. Get this ring back in place. That should go there. I get the claw assembly and I gently get this out of the way. You see what I do? I push it like this, keep the claw on the underside of the cam lobe. You even can put a little pressure on it. It's it has a spring. You can do this. You can you can put some force on it, but not like that because now it's uh, ahead of this spring. You do this and it goes like that, and you place it back. Then the spring is on the wrong side of the claw. Let me show you this. 
This hole goes into the pin of the top screw I showed you on the front, the one you don't turn. That's an eccentric screw and that screw makes sure it's set right. That's why I didn't want to touch it, because it's set. Now get the nylon slidey part in and it goes like this. The sliding part has to go to the cam. What I do, I put it here on the claw, I push the claw down and I just find the indent on the claw and it just snaps in place. How you set this wheel is very important uh, uh, in relation to the claw because if you put it too much backward, too much to the back, the claw will not uh, grip the film and transport it. If you put it too much to the front it will scrape against the gate. Um, but I think that if you get those two pulleys aligned, the top and the bottom one, then that's also the only setting where the claw works fine. And now I retighten the screws that are buried deep within this system. It's behind the shutter, so you can see it. There are two screws. And now get the spring back in place. The spring that controls the framer. And the framer is nothing more but controlling the height of the claw. Framer works again. If you are asking what these springy bits are, with this felt attached to it, that's an oil point. What you do, you drip oil in the red dotted parts. Uh, I have shown you that in other videos. And the oil seeps down uh, through those springs, there's rope in these springs, and they just oil the entire projector from there. So there are only two points on this projector. And as you can see, the little felt pad here is also touching the cam of the claw. Give the projector some oil so you can see what happens. You can see the oil seeping in here. Uh, we have now uh, sort of kind of changed the belt. And now we're going to put back the front of the projector. Make sure the claw is in a retracted position. Like this. You see how it shifts backward? That's just a safety precaution. Because if it's in the forward position it would be sticking out through the gate. And well, you might damage it while placing it on the projector now. Um, this is an action that you really can't do wrong because there are pins here. Get lamp house, slide it over and then gently get the housing in place. Find those pins and it might be that the gears behind it need a little turn. Also, this is not bound by a, a, a strict timing regime, so uh, it doesn't really matter if it's shifted one tooth or not.
There you have it. And then just put all the screws back in. And again, keep in mind, don't use violent force. It all has to slide in gently. This is a Swiss precision instrument, so it means it's made with care and love and it should be treated with exactly that. Then put those two screws in, let the lamp screws, don't forget the, lamps, the screws with the pin. Because they act like a hinge for the lamp house. You can just tighten them until they are as tight as they go, don't force it. But also don't let them hang in loose. Because this shifts anyway. Getting the lamp back in. Top tip for who, you who don't know. This lamp, it's uh, yeah, it's probably a Philips. No, it's a Sylvania, but that's Philips anyway. Uh, it has two tabs, a long one and a short one. And lamp fitting is constructed the same way, so there's only one way you can fit the lamp in. And this ensures the glow spiral stand in the correct position between the reflector and the condenser lens. Okay, close it up and we are done. I'm going to make a second video in which I'm going to show you how to thread a manual projector and let's do it with this projector when it's on the bench anyway. So I'll see you in the next video. Bye bye!